Welcome everybody. Today's topic is titled, Is Money Evil? This is really going to be a hot topic. I've said this to Gina before. When you talk about money, people get funny. And especially when you're talking about their own money or when we're talking about your money. People sometimes get funny about it. Yeah, they do. Would you agree with that? Yes. I think you can talk about a whole lot of topics. And when you start talking about money, you see people start getting a little tight. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really. Shoulders start going up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really. Mm -hmm. It's a reality. But we should be talking about it. If we don't, if the church, if the body of Christ does not talk about really everything, if, if we're not putting everything out on the table for the body of Christ and teaching it from a biblical standpoint, the world will teach you their way. That's a good word right there. And, and they'll teach it to your children. So honestly, there really shouldn't be any topics that are off the table when it comes to the body of Christ because we should be teaching everything from a biblical standpoint. Yes, and if there's any topics that you would like to uh, learn about or hear about, send us a private message. And if it's something that we know what it is and we feel confident, secure, that we have a revelation on it, in teaching mm -hmm. it, we we will teach it. We will talk about anything here. We will. And we'll, but we're going to make sure when we do it, we want to go to scripture and give you what the scripture says about it, and then we will give you our best understanding to what scripture means. And if we don't know, there's people that we call that we ask. We, we like, are constantly Papa learning. Dog. <laughs> <laughs> You went true. there first. I well, was it's, kind it's, of right. it's true. He it's just true. helped us with something uh, very recently that was a very serious matter. Yes. So we all know that that money is the root of all evil, right? Money's the root of all evil. But guess what? That's not what the scripture says. I was tricking you. Let's see what the scripture says. Okay. <laughs> Did you catch that thing? I caught it. Okay. I, I'm on to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have another bookmark I didn't know All I right. had. First Timothy. Can you start the timer? This might oh, be a two-parter. Right, that would be a good idea too, wouldn't it? Okay, so First Timothy chapter 6, starting at verse 9. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the path of faith in their greediness and perceived themselves through with many sorrows. So did you catch that? It says, for the love of money mm -hmm. is the root of all kinds of evil. Yes. Gina and I were looking at a commentary in the Dake Study Bible. This is called the Dake Annotated Reference Bible. You can look that up and probably get it off different websites. I highly recommend it. This is like old school stuff. But I love Dake's revelation on this, on this verse. The love of money, not money itself, is the root of all these evils of verse 9 and 10. Even the love of it is not the root of all evil that has ever been. Neither Lucifer nor Adam fell because of love for money. Cain, it says, mm -hmm. talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, David, and many others in Scripture went into sin for reasons other than the love of money. All men do not love money. Only some covet it and reap these evils of. Well, that's interesting you were saying that because I'm thinking how people can, if you leave a word out or you change a word, you can misquote something and change the meaning of it. 
Absolutely. So for the love of money, not just money, for the love of money. And then I'm reading, this is um, New King James. Yes. So this is for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Not of all evil. Right. Of all kinds mm -hmm. of evil. It's important to get that. It is. I mean, to read things clearly, and I never used to get that because I used to think, why are they like harping on this one word? But I, I get it now because when you leave out a word or change a word, you change the whole meaning of what something really said. Look, I'm 50 years old now, and Papa Doug would tell me things. He would say stuff like, you know, Chopper Son, you should read other books. It's good to know a little bit of theology. And for many, many years, I mean, he, he always extends grace to me. He, he's a good Papa. I would just say to him, well, I just think that people could just read the Bible. That's all you need. You believe, receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, read the Bible only, and you're going to have a wonderful walk. The Bible's amazing. I'm always trying to get people to read it because I know what it's done in my life. I don't know how people do it without it. I mean, it's, it's the sword of the Spirit. That's what puts you on the offense. You have the shield of faith and you have the sword of the spirit. And I understand Jesus, you know, the word, you know, he's Jesus is the word made flesh. But please don't take lightly how important it is to have the Bible. It, it's if you're just reading it for knowledge, all you have is a bunch of knowledge. That's right. When you read it from a humble heart and you truly want transformation, it transforms your life. It does. It's life changing. It's your instruction manual. Mm -hmm. It tells you and shows you who God is. It teaches you from Genesis to Revelation. You get to read about different people in the Bible and what they encountered and their experiences so you can learn from that. The Bible actually gives you wisdom. The more you read the Bible, the more wisdom you have. People can have a lot of knowledge, but knowledge without wisdom, that doesn't cut it. That's right. And the more you read it, the more revelation yes. you get. You can read the same thing over and over and over. And all of a sudden, one day you read it and you're like, I never saw that before. Yeah, or you so pray true. before you read, which you should always pray before you read it anyway. Yes. To ask the Lord just to um, really open your eyes, the, the eyes of your heart, and give you um, wisdom and discernment, give you revelation, help you to really understand the scriptures. But you'll just read it, and all of a sudden, it's like something opens up to you, and you you just have this amazing revelation of something that you've read so many times before, but you missed it every time, and this time, you see something completely different. Right. So, it's really important to stay in the Word. It is. It and really see, Jean and I are never going to give advice or tell you to do things that we're not already doing. I promise mm -hmm. you that. And, like I talked about earlier with Papa God telling me, like, it's good to read other things. I really have been in the season of reading so many different books right now. I'm just reading different books and listening to other people's points of view on it to see why they believe that or where are they getting that from and it makes a huge difference it does. like i said you want to get wisdom and what you know wisdom comes from spending time with god that's the way you get that remember knowledge mm -hmm. puffs up but love edifies that's what that's what the word says that's right so we're talking about money so it's so important Let, let's read Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. This can be life-changing for you. This might be a new thing you're hearing. But God actually wants you to prosper. The Father wants you to prosper. Gina and I have been talking about this. And it is not an accident that if it's if it's a rock star or a rapper 
or an actor or actress or anybody in the secular world, if they have tons of money, nobody has a problem with that. Right. Everybody's like, good for them. They're making They're money, making right? money. If somebody CEO of a company. Yeah. Whatever. Right. If you if you're wonderful at tackling somebody, if you're wonderful at playing basketball, if you get hit a baseball really good, well that's great. They're making money. Christianity is always under attack and it comes in because mm -hmm. people think that for some reason, you know, to be a good Christian you should be in poverty, you should be in lack, and for some reason that means that you're more holy. Yeah, I actually used to think that. That's a lie from I the did. pit of hell. I really used to think that, um, well, yeah, to be to be holy, to be pious, to be um, to be serving the Lord, you were to be lowly. And you shouldn't be materialistic and you shouldn't have much. And you certainly wouldn't be wanting to have much money. But the fact is, it's not about materialism. Right. But how are you going to help other people if you don't have any money oh, you yourself? Preach this. How on. are you ever going to be able to bless someone with an alm and say, Oh, your 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 spouse has been sick and and he's been out of work and you couldn't pay a bill. Here, let me write you a check. Oh, I I understand that you fell on hard times. Let me pay these bills for you. Let me help you out. Oh, I found out you your car broke down and it can't be fixed and you really need a car to get to work. Let me bless you with a vehicle. How can you do that if you don't have any money? Right. How can you fund a missionary who's willing to risk life and limb and feels completely called by the Lord to go into places like Pakistan and China and all these countries and they are willing to go in with all their heart to preach the gospel and see people get saved. How can you pour into them if you don't have any money to do so? It takes money. It takes money. And we're trying it to teach you today to do that. that money is a good thing. See, it's what you do with it, money. It is what you do. Money with it. can be used for evil and bad intentions with it, just as easily as a Christian, a born again Christian, mm -hmm. uses money for the good. See, we want to have money because the more money that we can have, like like Jean is talking about, if there's no issue about paying your mortgage or paying your rent right. when there's a need, you and the Lord puts it on your heart. You don't even hesitate, and you're, the Lord wants to bless you so you can be a blessing to right. others. And I'll say that again. The Lord wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing to right. others. And he, here's a quick principle about reaping and sowing. We talk about this all the time. People take that where reaping and sowing can be a, a negative thing. If you constantly sow into a negative lifestyle or selling into negative things you're going to reap a harvest of of, negative of negativity yes the same principle in in the the kingdom principle in a good way in a healthy born again way as christians is whatever you sow you reap that so right. if if you sow money you are going to reap money back to you I was thinking earlier, and people could laugh at this, it's not really funny, but during COVID, when people were going crazy over toilet paper, you remember oh this, we gosh, were at the right. grocery store and we already had toilet paper and we saw a guy driving down the lot and I think I told him Jesus loves him yeah. and I asked him what was going on and he said, oh man, I went to get some toilet paper and I have my wife and the kids at the right. house and the, and the shelves are empty you know what we sewed i sewed toilet paper we sewed yes. toilet paper into this man's life That's and right. guess what we never ran out of toilet paper and food let me tell you food we were we have food pantry at church and from our former church at harvest there was also a food pantry and a friend was bringing food from the food pantry i mean just be to bless our, our, of food. ourselves and to bless our neighbors and boxes and boxes of food. 
and we're giving it away to our neighbors and we're taking it down the street and giving it to other neighbors and we met some people along the way that needed food and we right. were meeting them and giving I them remember food that. and the more food we gave away the more food that kept coming in. I mean, we, we, we could just, and it got to the point where I was cleaning the whole dining room table off and sorting potatoes, apples. I, I mean, yeah. there was so much food, such an abundance, and we're just giving and get, and the more we gave, the more food came in. So there, there is a principle there of the reaping and the sowing. Absolutely. And, um, you sow cars yeah. in the people's lives and you give cars away, guess what comes back to you? cars it really does it, it, it's a kingdom principle yeah. and, and we've seen it happen in our own life of what we sowed into things and seeing things come back and i think was pastor dave i believe just talking about this that really i mean it's biblical it's from god the 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 law of reaping and sowing but even people who are not believers secular people people of other faiths people just out in the world they they understand that absolutely this. they call it other things sometimes but they do understand that what you give out you're going to get back so really think about that yeah. from the positive and the negative what are you giving out right so if what the world understands out? that how much more should a believer understand this absolutely. principle we're trying to get you to understand money is good. People get mad when you hear about a pastor and they have a jet. Oh, well, what does he need that jet for? Well, that comes in handy. If they have to be somewhere in another state or in another country, that gives them more time with their family. And then they could travel, preach the gospel, and come back home again. Now, nobody... And sometimes they have to cross like... Sometimes Time they're zones. like, let's say you're sometimes, and, and we know of pastors that they're preaching in Germany and then they have to turn around and the next day they have to be in a whole nother country. So, I mean, even the time principle of waiting in airports, going through customs, doing all this and the possibility of Might flights getting delayed, you may be late for your, your speaking engagement, for your um, time to get up there and preach. So really there are people that are um that are out there that are worldwide evangelists and preachers and they actually benefit from having a plane of their own because they are constantly going i mean they could not possibly reach all these destinations if they were waiting in airports and facing delays and all these other absolutely things. So, we're trying to get you we're gonna we're trying to get you to change your perspective on things here today like i said if the world can have all these things how much more does the father want a christian their, their child we are we are the children of god and every good and perfect gift gift comes from our loving father yes it's not his will for you to be poor and broke and just living day to day, not knowing how you're going to pay a bill, not knowing how you're going to eat the next day. Like I said earlier, he wants you to be so blessed that you can be a blessing to others. Absolutely. We just, we, we are 100%. We know this is true. We do know it's We've true. We've experienced and the Lord, it. The Lord has walked us through this. Yeah, and we it, walked it was it. a process for mm -hmm. me because I think I had more of the poverty mindset than you did even. But it just really like it. it is honestly like the Lord just taking the veil off of your eyes. And yeah. it does not mean running around and thinking about yourself 24-7 and what am I going to get. Yeah. So forget all that. It's not about that. But if you, if you are struggling and you can't figure out how you're going to pay your bills, how you're going to put food on the table, how you're going to put gas in your car, how are you going to possibly pour into the kingdom right. to see the gospel pre preached? How are you going to see that new church be built? How are you going to expand the church you have now because you have so many people coming in and you need more pews and you need more classrooms for Sunday school and you have to expand Who's going to pay for that building to to get extra rooms? Yeah, here's a you know? shocker for people because all through COVID we heard this one, and I heard, I think uh, Jonathan Shuttlesworth said that, and I loved it. 
I we understand that you know we're the you know temple. Our body is the temple, and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. But we're also we're the body of Christ. And guess what? God loves buildings. Buildings are a good thing because when it rains and when it snows and when it's a hundred degrees out and you could be inside of a building with the AC on. I, that's not unholy to have any of those things. Get rid of that poverty that's mindset. Right. And I'm going to end it on this note. We're definitely going into part two. We are. Because this is a powerful, hot topic. People, just because people are broke doesn't mean that you necessarily have a poverty mindset. There are people that have tons of money, more than they know what to do with it, but still live a poverty oh. mindset and they hoard or they're afraid to spend or it's never enough no matter how much they have right. they have to have more so you can be very rich in a way financially and have mm -hmm. tons of money in the bank or tons of cash or stocks or whatever yes. it's invested in but it's a fear of lack it's the fear mm -hmm. of never having enough and then you never could be a generous giver to help somebody because you still have that fear that it might run out or it could be what Gina said earlier, you're so busy focused on yourself and me, 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 that you're never stopping to look out for the one in front of you that might right. need help in a season. Good stuff. I it love it. And it, we're speaking at a life experience. Absolutely. So it's, it's just something that once you live it and you've experienced mm -hmm. it, you can't talk us out of it. You can't because we've already had the experience. Yeah. It's, so it's too like late for too anybody late to that. argue with that. We want to help you. We don't want to argue with right. you about it, but we want to get you free from it if yes. you need freedom in this area. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Absolutely. It is for freedom that Christ came to set us free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Leg kick. That was three Bible verses for you. This is time to go to part two. See you in part two. Is money evil? Love you guys. God bless you.